it's good to know that immigration has seen all this and they're doing their best to address it. So it remains to be seen if the visa agents here in Thailand are gonna find a way to make that work for them. Now, no matter who you are, what your situation is, how old you are, how much money you have, if you are planning on coming to Thailand, there's one thing that we all gotta deal with. Nobody likes to, but it's the reality with traveling to any new country and that is visas. Now questions about visas are the things that I get asked about the most about living in Thailand. And in general, I kind of like to avoid making any videos about visa processes just because everybody's situation is different. Things are constantly changing here in Thailand when it comes to immigration. So I don't want to give anybody the wrong information. Now, when I first got to Thailand and up until very recently, if you were under the age of 50, if you didn't have a Thai child, if you weren't married to a Thai national, honestly, your options for visas were pretty limited. The route a lot of people tend to go was the education visa, but even with that, there's limitations to that, which we will get into. But about a month ago, that situation seems to have changed. We finally got some answers. The new DTV visa, or DTV, because the V stands for visa already. Whatever, we finally got some answers. Let's talk about it. Now, if you've watched my videos long enough, which hopefully you have, you'll know that last year I mentioned that some other countries in Southeast Asia were putting into motion uh, visas that are targeted towards digital nomads. And now it looks like Thailand has followed suit. I said that was probably gonna happen, so I'll take mine. The new DTV visa, in a nutshell, is targeted at digital nomads or people who are looking to have kind of a staycation in Thailand. Want to stay a little bit longer. They want to be able to work, especially remotely. And they're just looking to stay in Thailand for an extended period of time. Now, like I said, before this, you really had two options. You could go the elite visa route, which is expensive. It's a little too much for my blood. Or you could go with an education visa. But both of those have their caveats. With the education visa especially, it's good for one year, but you have to extend every 90 days. It does get relatively expensive and you can get that three times. So if you do the math, that's three years total that you can have in Thailand as long as you're legit. Now I know a lot of people are still talking about visa runs and all that jazz, but from what I've seen, it really, that's kind of a crapshoot. It depends on which official you talk to when you're coming back in. Some people say it's super against the rules. Other people say it's good. The immigration website says that you're allowed to do it. But for me, I get stressed out enough when it comes to immigration. So I would like to avoid that. Now with the new DTV visa, it seems a lot of those problems are solved. And when it first came out, there was kind of a lot of questions that were left unanswered. The first announcement of it was pretty vague, but thankfully some people have done some great videos so far. We've got some great articles. So let's figure out what we know now. Now the main article I'm gonna be referencing, I kind of pattered around and read a few different ones, but this one seems to kind of encompass everything that I did find and it comes from ThaiEmbassy.com. It is titled Destination Thailand Visa, DTV Visa Thailand, 2024. As of July 15, 2024, the Thai government has confirmed the destination Thailand visa. DTV visa is now live for those looking to work and travel, workcation in Thailand. The DTV allows holders to stay in Thailand for up to 180 days per entry and is valid for five years. And that's what they announced initially, but that just by itself is a little bit confusing. But we do have some official answers now that answer a lot of those questions. So let's just hop right into it. Visa duration five years visa type multiple entry which is a really big part of this it means even if you don't want to stay for that 180 days if you want to come in stay for three months and then leave and go somewhere else and come back you don't have to get any re-entry permits like you do with your education visa if you do if you're on an education visa and you leave without getting that re-entry permit when you come back your education visa is now void so that's a good thing to know extendable Yes, once per year. So you're good for 180 once you come in, and then you can extend that one more time for another 180 days, totaling 360 days total. Now this was a big part of it that I was wondering about. I said, okay, well, it's good for five years. I can stay for 180, extend once for another 180, and then can I just 
keep doing that extension kind of like how it is in the Philippines. We finally got some official answers. I don't know if it says it in here specifically, but it was mentioned that after that initial 360 days, assuming that you do the extension, you do have to leave and then come back in. But from what I understand, there's no minimum amount of time that you have to be out of Thailand and then come back. Since you are good for that five years, in theory, you should be able to just hop out maybe a week, maybe two days to another country, come back in, and according to everything we've read, you should be fine. Now, moving forward in the article, as mentioned before, the DTV's target audience consists of digital nomads, freelancers, and remote workers. This means if you work remotely for a foreign company or you work for yourself as a freelancer, influencer, this visa is designed for you. Though the Thai government has pointed out that not just anyone can obtain a Thailand DTV visa as a digital nomad, they did not, as of this writing, specify the minimum income, employer, or social media requirements. Still, it is unlikely that you will qualify for the DTV visa Thailand if the Thai authorities do not consider your foreign employer to be legitimate. So that's still kind of up in the air. They do state some uh, financial requirements and they do state that you have to prove that you work for said company, but there's no real black and white as to where they draw the line as to what a freelancer or 1099 employee if you're from America. So that one is still kind of up in the air. And now we're moving forward into the listed requirements. First things first, passport or travel document. That one's pretty obvious. Passport photograph, document showing current location, evidence of financial assets. So this is an important one. Amount of no less than 500,000 Thai baht, which is I think around $13,000. It says here that that differs by embassy. So that's something to think about. Bank statements, pay slips, or a sponsorship letter can act as evidence. Proof of visit, workcation, an employment contract, employment certificate from your country, or a professional portfolio showing your freelancer work. So maybe people that make videos or social media influencers, I'm not sure if maybe showing your following would be enough. So that one's still kind of in the air. Thai soft power activities, things like training Muay Thai, cooking classes, stuff like that. So you would need to prove that you've signed up for one of those classes or an acceptance letter, something like that. Now summarizing a bit, it does state in this article as well that once you do hit that initial 360 days after you do your extension, you do have to leave and come back in. Now this is a very important point, a question that I had personally that this article has finally answered. What's the easiest way to get a DTV visa in Thailand? And it specifically states here, you cannot apply for this visa while in Thailand. You will have to return to your country of residence and apply through the Thai embassy or a participating consulate. To give yourself the best chance for approval, the easiest way to get the Thailand DTV visa is to apply as a digital nomad or remote worker. As of this writing, there are no guidelines on which specific Thai soft power activities are eligible for the DTV, and there is no certification process for organizations offering these activities. Based on reports from our international contacts and clients, applying through the workcation category has seen the best results. So for now, we do seem to have some pretty solid answers on how things are are gonna work. I would imagine that there will be some tweaking. There will probably be some things that might be changed a little bit here and there. Immigration is gonna have to see how things are working out, how the whole application process is going. The one question that I have personally right now is since you can't apply for it in Thailand, is it possible to go to just another country and apply through the consulate there or do you need to go to your home country? Because I know some of the other visas that you can't apply for in Thailand, let's say you're here already and want to get a new visa, you can leave the country and go to Vietnam, Cambodia, somewhere like that and do the application process there. So I'm not really sure how that would work. I would assume it would kind of be the same, but who knows, it's a brand new visa. So we'll kind of just have to wait and see. But for me, as of right now, it seems like this is really gonna fill a hole and a need in the whole visa market. There are tons of digital nomads nowadays and Thailand is a favorite place for a lot of them. But like we said, if you're under that 50 years old mark or you're not married or have a kid here or you're not just completely ball and rich and can afford that elite visa, it's called something else now. It's not called the elite anymore. It's good to know that immigration has seen all this and they're doing their best to address it. And like we said, I have just summarized a few articles. And if you don't wanna trust just some random YouTuber when it comes to immigration legalities, I totally understand that. But there is actually another guy in Thailand, really good YouTuber, his name's Retired 
working for you. He did a great video actually interviewing one of the immigration officials, one of the people that helped implement this visa, and they go through tons of FAQs, and it's a great video. I will link that down in the description below. If there was anything that we didn't talk about in this video, maybe they'll cover it for you over there. So for me right now, I am very excited. This seems like it's just gonna be a little bit of an easier option. One thing we didn't talk about, I almost forgot, was that the application fee for this visa is 10 thousand baht so it remains to be seen if the visa agents here in thailand are going to find a way to make that work for them if they do i would expect to pay more than that that's just kind of how it works but like i said we might just have to wait a little bit to see how it really works out if you do have any questions or information pertaining to this visa that you think is important that we didn't talk about feel free to drop it down in the comments below it is always an open discussion and as always thank you guys so much for tuning into another video i'll catch you in the next one